Hey everyone, how's it going? Another homework help video, chapter 13. Only one more after this, we're getting there, getting closer. All right, money in the banks, let's see what we got here. What percent of the money supply is depicted in the figure is cash? Okay, so they're telling us the total money supply right now is 31,000 billion. We have 1,335 billion, that's in currency circulation. We have 17552, which is in transaction account balances. And then you actually have a fair amount. You have 3 billion in traveler's checks outstanding, okay? So all we do is we take our 1, 3, 4, 5 billion over here. And then we divide it by the total which is 31 and that's it that's all you would do let's see what we get remember these are in billions one three four five divided by 31 all right so we're at point four three three okay and we're, they want a percent, so we need the percenter, so it's going to be 43.38%, or 39% we round up. So 43.38%. And let's see how we look. Check my work. Sure, we got it. Yep, looking good. Clear this. Let's go to the next. Next one. Alrighty. The bank has a hundred million in deposits and eighteen million in reserves with a reserve requiring a point fifteen. First we gotta know what these things are, okay? So mil hundred million in deposits. That's how many people they owe. So they owe a hundred million people worth of money. So if people come in, they all came in at one point, they'd have to somehow get a hundred million to cover all that, okay? That'd be hard to do. They have 18 million in reserve. So right now, if all 100 million came in, how much money could they actually give out as is? They only have 18 million to give out. Okay, that's it. That's all they have in reserves. They'd have to figure out and get money from somewhere else. Um, the requirement, though, is what? 0.15. Okay. So if they have 100 million in deposits... They have to have in their reserves at least 15% of that, okay? So let's go ahead and times that out. 100 million times 0.15. This one should be pretty simple. It's 15 million. This is what's required for you to keep. You have to keep the 15 million required. If this is what you actually have reserved, and that's what's required, how much excess reserves you have how much do you have to work with as far as lending well you just minus it 18 minus 15 you can have 3 million that's how much you have excess to loan out as is okay unless you get new deposits coming in or you get loans from other banks all right so how much are in its required reserves well, required it has to have 15 million because there's 100 million in deposits and the reason why they have these required reserves is so that we don't have runs on banks people are okay and we don't have as much financial collapses going on excess because it has 18 million that means there's 3 million in excess and if 3 million is in excess that's how much it can actually work with that's how much it can lend out is 3 million so let's take a look and see if we did it. Check your work. We got it, it's right there, perfect. All right, on to the next one. Clear all this. What is the value of the money multiplier when the required reserve ratio is 0 0.20? Uh-oh, are people scared? We got numbers coming on, all right. What is the value of the money multiplier when the required reserve ratio is 0 0.20. So basically, they want to know how much money will keep kicking around the system. When you have money in banks, 
it doesn't sit there. It gets used somewhere else, and it keeps going around in the system, and they only keep back what they have to keep back, and so it keeps going into someone else's bank somewhere on some other loan, okay? So, we come over here. What is the value of the money multiplier when the reserve ratio is 0.20? So we have a 0.20 reserve ratio, which means for every dollar, they have to keep how much? 20 cents, okay? They have to keep 20 cents for every dollar. Technically, I wouldn't need that decimal once I add that, that cent sign there. Um, so what would the multiplier be? It's going to look very similar to a question we had before. All you do is you take the reserve ratio, RR, the ratio, and you're going to divide 1 by it. That will give you your multiplier. So 1 divided by 0 0.20. I can actually do this in my head. It's going to be 5. There we go. And you can work it out in a calculator one. Just take one, divide it by 0.2, and you will get five. The required reserve ratio is 0.25. What happens to the money multiplier? I'm pretty sure it's four, but we will double check. Take one, divided by 0.25 equals four. Yep, there we go. And this would be four. That's all it is. You just take a 1 and divide it by the reserve ratio. And that gives you your multiplier. So we had 1 divided by 0 0.20, which in this case ended up being 5. And then, of course, we did it again with 0.25 and ended up being 4. All green. Let's go. Let's keep going. All right, if a bank has a total reserves of 200,000, let's get these all taking note, 200,000, and 1 million in its deposits, okay, so that's how much it owes. So remember, deposits are how much it owes. That's how much it has to, that's what people can call on. And reserves, 200,000, means how much they actually have to give out at, at their bank if people came to call. Do they have enough for everyone if everyone came in? No, they'd have to do loans and figure out something. How much money can it lend if the reserve required ratio is 5%? So remember, the required reserve ratio is always going to be based off of your deposits, and you just link it to whatever percentage it's wanting. So what is 5% of a million? Let's go in here. Go 0 0.05 times 1000. Zero, zero, zero. That's 1000. 1 million. 50,000 is what they're required to have at that rate. So we go in here. We take 1 million. We times it by 0 0.05. That's our 5% there. And we got 50,000 in reserves. That's how much they have to keep back is 50,000. It's required. However, how much do they actually have? They have 200,000, okay? So what, what's their free excess money that they can work with? Well, all you do is minus out the 50,000 from here. 50,000, it's just a comma there, there we go, all right. And we get 150,000. There we go. All right, let's put this in. One five. Oh, oh, oh. Nope, nope, not 15,000. 150, there we go. 10%. Well, all you would do is you're going to change this instead of 0.5, you're going to go 0.10. And doing some simple math, we know that's double, so it's going to be. 100,000 on the next one. And if you have to keep back 100,000, how much is your actual free reserves going to be? Well, minus 100,000 from 200,000, you're going to get 100,000. 
All right, let's see if we did it. Okay, we're good. Let's go. Last question. In December of 1994, a man in Ohio decided to deposit all of his 8 million pennies he had been saving for nearly 65 years. His deposit weighed over 48,000 pounds. With a reserve requirement of 10%, how does his deposit change the lending capacity? Okay, so first, we have to take 8 million and divide that by 100 to actually get to dollars. So, go over here, calculator. We have... 8,000, 800,000, there's 8 million pennies. We divide it by 100, $80,000. Okay, so that's what we're really worried. So we gotta first do that conversion. So all this baloney here is just $80,000. Okay, that's how much he deposited. Okay, uh, with the reserve requirement of 10%, how did his deposit change the lending capacity? Well, if he deposited 80,000 and they have to keep how much back? They have to keep 10%, so 0.10. So that means, let's just do that. So 80,000 times 0.1 equals 8,000. So we just take 80,000 over here. It's gonna be 8,000 they have to keep back out of his deposit, the cover is deposit, as far as the requirement which means they're minusing that from this original amount as far as what they're gonna be able to work with. So 80,000 minus 8,000 is gonna give you what? Well, we can just do this in my head, 72,000. Okay. So find out that 8,000 is what they have to keep back. You have 72,000 to work with. Um, how does deposit change the lending capacity of they're going to go first as bank? Well, 72,000 is what they now have to lend. If they, as long as they keep the 8,000 back, they're free to lend 72,000. 72,000. Okay, the banking system. Okay, so right now we have $72,000 in the system. How much is this going to kick around in the system? Well, we have 72,000 in the system, and the reserve requirement's the same for all banks at 10%. All we need to do is get that multiplier and apply it to the 72 down here. That's all we have to do. So once we got his initial, what his initial bank can lend, this is now available for the entire banking system, okay? So we take the reserve requirement, which is 0.1, or, or 10%, and we're gonna divide one by that. If you do that in the calculator, it should be 10. So we take one divided by 0.1. Yep, 10. That's your multiplier. Equals 10. So then you're gonna have 10 right here times, what? Times your $72,000. That's how much is now available to lend over here. So all we need to do is what? Add a zero. So seven, two, zero, 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 zero. The banking system now has somewhere around 20,000 that it can work with. And his bank got 72,000 off of his deposit they can work with. Let's check this. All right, that's it. We're good to go. Hopefully this helped everybody. Only one more chapter after this. See you then. All right, take care.